I can't get off my phone and I know that you can't too. Cell phones for many have become something they can't live without. Indeed, it is by design. It's no surprise that most Australians have some degree of nomophobia. Experts warn smartphone or internet addiction can negatively impact your life. What started out as an innovative new phone launch meant to enhance our lives has now evolved into a deeply ingrained issue in our society. If social media is designed to be addictive, how in the world are we meant to get our lives back? Let me tell you the story of how I curbed my social media addiction and how you can do it as well. I've been meaning to get off social media for a while now. Although I had kept it mostly under wraps for the larger part of my life, it slowly started to creep in more and more. Now I was averaging about five hours a day and on days I felt horrible and truly at my lowest, that number ballooned. The worst it got to was 11 hours. I knew I had to stop and get off, but it felt like I could never find the right time. I couldn't delete it now because I wanted to post a photo of the beach I went to. I can't delete it now because my friends have been sending me a lot of memes lately. I always seem to have a reason as to why I couldn't delete it. Until one day that choice was made for me. Did you just break your phone? Yeah, it finally happened. I was at the gym one day and poorly misplaced my phone, smashing it with a 12 kilo dumbbell. Sure, it sucked in that moment, but this gave me a clean break. I physically could not go on social media, or my phone for that matter. I got myself a dumb phone to get me by until I could get it fixed, but that was a few weeks out. It sucked, but I embraced the journey of living without a smartphone and without social media. <sighs> this thing is useless. In the beginning, I kept going for my phone. I'd stare at the home screen, waiting for something to pop up. I wasn't used to the silence or what to do when something wasn't grabbing my attention. In the shower, I would just stand there and wait for my carefully curated music to begin, only to realise I hadn't sung in the shower in a long, long time. And occasionally I just stared at a wall and questioned what in the world I was meant to do. For once, it felt quiet. Eventually, I really started to enjoy the ASMR of life. Something just seemed to shift as I got used to this newer and quieter lifestyle. I stopped caring about trends and whether or not I missed a friend's story. I enjoyed how quiet and peaceful it was to cook something without having someone yell at me the entire time. And I came up with great ideas for content that just felt more original and more myself than ever before. Oh my god, I just had an amazing idea. What if it had googly eyes as a symbol for oh my gosh. I've had more time to pursue things that I felt I never had time for before. A new hobby of mine is gardening. Every day I get to find something new and it both challenges and relaxes me. I have found so much more enjoyment and accomplishment in gardening than a screen has ever given me. So now I want to push this further. I've started gardening, I read books and I am far more sociable, but I want to start another hobby that I've been meaning to get back into for a while. So I have this artist kit that I got as a gift a while ago, which I never really used, and I am going to try and paint. A lot of us are glued to our phones. That is our hobby these days. I know that any time that I asked people, like, you know, what they like to do for fun and stuff like that, they'll be like, I don't know. It's because they spend all their time on the phone. And I mean, I'm obviously guilty of that. That's obviously why I'm here, but, um, I think, oh no, come on, oh no, <laughs> shit, okay, so we're definitely using blue, am I surprised, no, not at all, <laughs> oh I've got it all over me now, I think the other thing as well is that we're, all of us are really scared to be bad at something, like, you know, we see everybody online, especially these days, and you know, there's so many like, talented people, and you kind of like look at it and go, well, I can never do that. I already know I'm shit at that, so there's no way I'm even going to try. But, you know, we've all got to start somewhere. I think the biggest challenge that I noticed was just recognising how much of an addict I was to my phone. 
And obviously that can come off as quite harsh, but I can kind of see it as like being an alcoholic or someone that's addicted to cigarettes. Like, you know, you don't realize how far you'll go to try and get something until it's gone. And I think that that was the really positive thing about me going ahead and cold turkeying it with breaking my phone was because I literally could not get onto social media. Like if I really wanted to, it was really difficult. Like I could go on my computer and, you know, go onto the websites, but I wasn't going to do that. But with my dumb phone, this bad boy, um, I could actually jump onto Facebook with it, but it was so clunky and annoying that it made me not want to use it, which was a really good thing. And I think it just made me really aware of the fact that like I was constantly trying to get back on the phone. I would just stare at my dumb phone for hours and just be like, do something. And I don't think you really recognize that until you've had that complete separation. Like sometimes you'll kind of rationalize in your head. It's like, oh, actually, you know, I'm not that bad. Like I could be worse. I'm conscious about what I'm doing with my phone. But then when you actually fully cut yourself off, you kind of go, oh, no, 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 no. I was actually horrible with my phone. I just didn't want to admit it. And I think that was a really big turning point for me because it was just like, oh, okay, I think I'm okay, but really I'm not. So I think that was kind of the most scary thing to come to realize was just, oh, okay, I actually do have a problem and I am needing to try and fix this and everything is going against me to try and achieve this. This is going to be like the worst rose of the world, just so everyone knows. The reason why I really wanted to get off social media is that I recognized that I was wasting a lot of time that I could be putting towards other things that I enjoyed doing. And I suppose that's where a lot of people start, like, you know, I am obviously a very creative person. I love doing my YouTube videos and I love just going ahead and creating things. Like even just trying to create this right now, I am having a ball. Like it has been so long since I've done any form of like art in this way. And I did not realize how much I missed it. Like this is already so, so appealing to me. Like I actually think I will keep doing this. Oh God, I'm so bad at the moment though. <laughs> <laughs> practice definitely makes uh progress that's for sure but uh it's something I can enjoy doing without having other people tell me how to do it I just get to enjoy it you know I think one of the biggest reasons as to why I don't want to go back to social media or using it the way that I did before is control um I think it's very easy to lose control with socials and I've definitely experienced this before where I've kind of deleted social media for a little while and then I've jumped back on. I was like, yep, no, nope, I'm in control now. And then five minutes later, I'm on TikTok for the next 10 hours and I just can't control myself. And I think especially when you start thinking about taking care of another person, whether that be your own child or having other people around you in your life, being able to control something that can be so addictive started to become really appealing to me. And oh my god, I put way too much black in this. Oh no. Oops. Anyway. Um, yeah, it became extremely appealing to me to try and find a way to mitigate it and not allow it to control me. I wanted to be in control of it rather than it be in control of me. Um, and that was a really big turning point as well was, okay, if this thing's controlling me, how can I expect someone else to be able to forgo all of the things that this thing is doing. Do you need to break your phone to be able to quit social media? No. Obviously for me, it ended up working in my favor and it certainly helped. But I will say that I do think you need a dumb phone because you don't really realize how quick and how sneakily social media can certainly jump back into your life. I have done several times where I've done a social media detox or I've gone ahead and tried to stop using my phone for whatever reason and I never ended up doing it for as long as I was planning to do it. And I think having a dumb phone like the one that I had will at the very least keep you on track and help you push through the hardest parts of like the detox because 
it is so scary and so fascinating as to how easily it'll just come back into your life. Like I currently have Facebook on my phone and whenever I'm bored, it's almost like I instantly go to that. Um, so I, del I deleted it again because I was like, no, nah, no way am I letting this control me again. And just keeping the socials off your phone will obviously help, but because it's so easy to re-download and kind of in that moment of weakness, just go, yeah, all right, I'll just turn it back on. It's fine. You don't realize how quickly it'll just go back into your life. And that's kind of the scary part to me. So I would recommend anyone to go ahead and get one of these dumb phones. Like this, I think was a hundred bucks. I know you can get cheaper, but you know, he had pretty much most of the things that I needed. It definitely made life harder. But I think that was the point as to, or at least for me, I needed to make life harder to recognize how much easier life is with a smartphone and then utilize a smartphone for only those reasons, not because uh, of social media. Like even just like having like Google Maps, like that thing had Google Maps and oh my God, it was a pain to use, but it really made me appreciate the Google Maps that I have now on my smartphone. And so I still use that. And my social media usage has gone down significantly. Like there have been like many, many days where I haven't been on Instagram now and I want to try and keep it that way. I want to, I've completely deleted TikTok. Like it is not coming back on my phone. I don't care. It's not happening. And it just feels better. Like, especially with short form content, I definitely recognize that my brain fries like so much easier. Whereas longer form content, I do know that especially if it's on my phone it does still stimulate me a little bit too much where I'll get like sore eyes and like a fuzzy sort of head and it just wasn't great um so that's something I'm still working on like trying to balance the longer form content still is something I'm still trying to figure out but in regards to the shorter film content, I am trying to steer clear from that as much as physically possible, even on YouTube. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> well, what do we think? Be nice in the comments. This is the first time in like five years since I've painted. So, well, yeah, this is what happens when you go ahead and delete social media. You actually go ahead and get some proper hobbies that you can enjoy and really just Appreciate the process as well.